Getting into microcontrollers is something I've always wanted to do. However, I've kept putting it off. I've had previous experiences with programmable EEPROM kits, but they were all too hard, and I could never get them going. What prompted me was an introductory article in this month's Silicon Chip, January 2012. There is also an ad for the Mini Maker Fair. Present were several Arduino display stands, including Freetronics, who sell this compatible Arduino board. This is the hub of an Arduino project. You can plug in inputs and outputs so that the Arduino can talk to things, read inputs and drive outputs. These can be anything from wireless modules to temperature sensors to relays to audio oscillators, almost anything that you can switch or read inputs from. It also comes with a cable that just plugs into the USB in your computer. One of the things that scared me about all this was the programming, as I'd never done it successfully before. However, the Arduino does come with some programs. Things like turning an LED off for a second and turning it on again. It doesn't sound very useful, but supposing I was to elongate some of the pulses and change some of the spacings, I could make it send Morse code. It could be an automatic CQ caller or beacon. So here's at least one amateur radio project that would be fairly simple to implement, even without too much experience. In this video, you'll find out if that early optimism is proved or not. This is what you get. The board, a lead for the USB, and instructions and circuit diagram. The main assembly manual, the Freetronics kit in, a picture of all the parts, a component list and step by step how you assemble the unit. It's written very well by someone who both knows their stuff and how to string two words together. A circuit diagram, another getting started sheet. You'll need this once you've finished building the kit and information on what else you can read. So let's try and download a program and see if it works. And in Arduino language, programs are called sketches. The steps in this are software installation. This is the programming software for the Arduino and some sample programs. Then you've got to compile and upload the software. It's a zip file, about 90 meg. When you first open this program up, without the board connected, it's a good idea to write down a list of the available COM ports. An important thing is polarity. The green wire on the top must go to the top of the board. And you even have some action from the LEDs. The blue LED is on indicating power and the red LED is flashing the code for the blink program. Compiling the sketch. Uploading was not trouble free. An error message AVR dude STK 500 underscore get sync. Not in sync. With the board connected to the computer you're supposed to see an extra entry under the serial port list. However that wasn't there and it meant I couldn't upload sketches to the board. This confirms my long-held view that networking is unnatural for a computer. The chance of it succeeding first time is very slim. For troubleshooting, I changed the Blink program to Blink on for 3 seconds, then off for 3 seconds. Then I'd know if I've uploaded that successfully, because it's different from the standard 1 second that comes supplied. After a bit of digging, I found that device drivers can be a problem. If they're not installed, or not installed correctly, they can result in 
connections to the outside world for instance this board not working one way to get to device drivers is deeply buried in control panel there's some resources in Google that will tell you how to find it it's under performance and maintenance once I got into device manager I found that FT232R USB UART was not installed I'll just try and reinstall them I've done my troubleshooting and uploading and having a look at the list of serial ports and there's a new port not on the list COM3 so I can select that one now I've got the troubleshooting program the one that blinks the LED for three seconds and we'll try and compile and upload that again so far so good done uploading binary sketch size 1026 bytes of a 3370 20 byte maximum no error messages success at last the red LED is on and off for three seconds that reflects the changes I made to the program and that the upload was successful with the connection sorted out I can now write some more lines of code and make the blinking thing more useful there's a loop in the code which I want to keep but I want to have dots and dashes and shorter times to reflect the faster speed of Morse code it helps to know the structure of Morse code and in particular the amount of spacing you have to leave between letters and words this is code for sending the letter C in a continuous loop on the left is the code that does the work on the right is the description for what it does this really helps troubleshooting again success we have the letter C being sent in Morse code Having learnt how to turn on and off an LED, you can now think about more useful projects. Here's the first one, it's a beacon. The ID is in Morse. Each character or spacing has to be individually written as a line in the code. You must specify how long you want the LED on and off. You must also note the larger spacing for in between characters and in between words where it says delay that's how long you either want it turned on or turned off the number in brackets is in milliseconds 100 milliseconds is about right to allow for a dot and 300 for a dash between characters a spacing of 300 and between words a spacing of 700 the beacon program takes 2.4k out of a total of over 30k it's too long it should be a lot shorter for what it does a competent programmer would use a loop to cut the number of lines down I've uploaded it and this is the result What makes all this really useful though are input output devices things like temperature sensors, switches, relays, buzzers, radio transmitters anything you want to control or to sense you can buy things called shields which are little boards that plug in to the top of the Arduino but if you're used to messing with electronics it's probably just as easy to build your own something really simple I knocked up a Pierce crystal oscillator using one transistor, two resistors, 
two capacitors and a crystal for 7.159 MHz. The circuit is similar to that of the signal frequency BFO on my website. The current drain is very low, well within the limits of the Arduino main board. If it drew too much more, I would have to have a transistor to drive it. I've plugged it into the main board. One wire goes to the ground and the other to pin 13. That's the same pin that drives the LED, so I didn't need to change the code. Enough of being a beacon, what about something else? Another program is a CQ caller, similar to the beacon, but a bit longer. That takes about 5k. Again, it could be shortened a lot in the hands of an expert. All I need to do is upload the program. and it becomes an automatic CQ caller. Well, this could be it. Oh, I think we've found the fox. So that's another use for the Arduino, a fox transmitter. The same components as the beacon or the CW core, but just a change of program was required to change its function. The board uses all conventional components, there's no surface mount. I would be inclined to keep this board for prototyping purposes. If I want to incorporate Arduino in a project, I would program it and get it working on this board and then build another board and have the required components built in the device that it's used for. To conclude, 10 out of 10 for the Freetronics Kitten Arduino compatible kit. Useful for many amateur radio applications. And, even if you can't write a program, there's a lot of programs you can use and slightly modify to suit radio needs. Highly recommended.